the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. We'll touch on four scriptures and then I'll begin to teach. Paul is teaching here and he's saying for a great door, he's teaching the church in Corinth, and an effectual is opened unto me. So he's talking about open doors. Are we together now? Dimensions, access. A great door, an effectual is opened unto me. He said, but there are many adversaries. A door of opportunity a door of growth a door of grace but he's saying he's teaching us something here that the moment you see doors opening don't celebrate prepare to fight that a great door is open unto me but that the moment a door begins to be opened he's teaching you that you should not be carried away by that door that is open the moment you see doors opening know that there are many adversaries and so young men get set when you see doors open take up your shield of faith because there is the wicked one are you are you getting what i'm teaching you now yes that for every door that is opened and effectual that means you can see the presence of the evil one to validate whether it was God that opened that door. And that you are prepared to fight with this shield of faith. Please understand, I teach you a deep mystery that you will need for your spiritual life. A great door and an effectual is open. But many are the adversaries. But the Bible says you can take hold the shield of faith and you will be able to quench the fiery darts. Now, listen. It matters that we understand how we grow in the kingdom. It matters, listen please, that we understand how we transit in the kingdom. It matters that we understand how victory is wrought for the saints. Because for many believers, we are aware of promises, but we have not been mentored into the dynamics of walking into the experience of the life, the power, the grace of the kingdom. And so while we are inspired by an expected end, many times we are ignorant of the things that happen between Egypt and Canaan. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So it is true that we fix our eyes on the end, but we are never really taught to understand the many things, the vicissitudes that we will face on the way. And lack of, listen, lack of that understanding can do many things to our experience, including not allowing us to arrive at the end. Spiritual maturity is not just the ability to be in church. In fact, it's not just the ability to read your Bible, to be equipped. Remember when he talks about fathers, their advantage is knowledge. You are fathers because you have an advantage of knowledge. So when he talks about fathers, he says you have knowledge. There is something that you know. When he talks about young men, he says, young men, you are about to know something. You do not yet know it. But in your fight, what you need now is the strength and the stamina to fight. So that when you become fathers, you will also be able to guide the young. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Fathers, you have this knowledge because you fought. 
and that experience taught you something about God that has become an advantage and a security for you. Young men, you are, your advantage is that you are emotion, there is strength, but there are many things you are going to know. And then he says, guard you with strength and stand in faith because a door is open towards you but there are many adversaries and you must understand the spiritual technology by which men fight until they grow to become fathers listen very carefully to what i'm about to teach you it's a very powerful mystery many believers are not trained to understand the things of the spirit and how to navigate the enemy please hear me this life is a combination of victories that appear when we fight a good fight of faith now I believe in the grace message don't get me wrong I believe in all of these dimensions of the kingdom but there is something about destiny that I want us to respect tonight that destiny is a threat to Satan the very the very picture of destiny your fulfilling your destiny is the assurance that Satan's doom is imminent and so when Satan sees a man and a people with a destiny, they become the center of his interest. Now, many believers don't know this. We have all kinds of wise sayings. Don't trouble me. I don't trouble you and all of that. And we have sometimes this false indoctrination that the only way you give satan the only way satan comes to you is when you look for his trouble you are joking go and read your bible well the, there is something the moment you carry that thing calls satan till you leave the earth please understand what i'm teaching you when there is prophecy upon your head when there is grace upon your life when there is a word upon your mouth, when there is an interest upon your life, Satan is interested in you. And let me tell you, there is one thing about Satan. He has an undying interest. He wants everything God wants. And if that thing is you, then listen to this message. Koinonia is quiet. <laughs> The proposition that many believers have that you just know God, love God, worship God, engage principles here and there, you know, just speak the word here and there and just cut walk into a glorious destiny is a joke. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's a joke. If it is destiny in Christ, if it is a life of victory, then please understand what I tell you that there is faith that overcomes follow me as i teach i have discovered that satan's assignment listen carefully satan's assignment is never to fight your faith i used to think satan was after our faith i found out that's wrong satan is not after your faith Satan is after the information upon which your faith was built. Now, please understand what I'm teaching you. Satan is not interested in your faith. Satan is interested in information, words. Because that is the basis upon which faith is built. Please understand this. <clears throat> There is no basis for faith until it is built on a word or the word as the case may be. Are we together? If I tell Pastor Alpha or Pastor Femi or Kenny or anybody, I say, come. I have called them. I have sent a word. They can place their faith upon it now. 
You see that? So, what you really attack is not their obedience. What you attack is the information. If I tell Pastor Alpha, come, Pastor Femi, come, and they hear another voice that says, go. Now, that is an attack on information because in either ways, it is going to necessitate action. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. Many believers get to a point in their Christian experience where they have access to spiritual information that many times begins to corrupt the pace of their work with God. There are many believers who the challenge in their life is information dependent. Satan just comes in to plant another information. Please hear what I teach you. We're going to go to Genesis and you see what happened to Adam and Eve. I, I thought Satan was after faith, action. No, he's after information. Hezekiah heard just one information from a prophet and Hezekiah's whole life went down. If prophet Isaiah never reached Hezekiah, he probably would be able to, maybe he would have died still. But just that information, one information. The apostles of the Lamb were walking with Jesus and they had one information, I'm about to die, I'm going and I'm leaving you. And that changed everything. Jesus, where are you going? A dead body had one information and came back to life. Wine was finished. One information was introduced. And the next thing, water was turned to wine. Listen to me. This is a kingdom where we reign. And this is a kingdom where Satan operates. And this is also a kingdom where God operates by the power of spiritual information. In fact, information generally. Whether spiritual, whether intellectual, whether psychological. Our fight, therefore, in this kingdom is not necessarily a fight against spirits alone. It's not necessarily a fight against antichrist systems alone. The greatest warfare of a believer, listen to me, will be the warfare of words, the warfare of information. One information comes into your life or a series of information and it turns an ordinary student to become a doctor to become an engineer to become whatever it is information one information in a business seminar suddenly turns someone who has no hope of prospering he receives that information and that information turns his life around have you been taught that in this kingdom, the maker and the breaker of men is information? There is what we call IT today. It's called information technology. Information is so powerful that technology was built around it. People have become multi-millionaires because they have mastered the art of disseminating information. They have created platforms around the world that connect people and supply information and they have prospered through it. Information is so powerful that when God is about to come and give Daniel an information, he doesn't just speak from heaven, he sends an angel with it to come. That's how much he places value on information. When Mary is about to receive Jesus, Jesus coming to her like that, she would not receive him. An angel had to come. Before the journey of Jesus started, she supplied an information. And Mary said, be it unto me. Hmm. 
Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord has made. Verse 2. And he said, notice now, we call this the fall of man theologically speaking of, you know, Adam and Eve now falling from that height and being banished out of the Eden of God. And remember, the entire story started with words. Satan comes to the woman, to the serpent, and says, what did God say? Please go back to verse 1. I want to find out. All I am after is what information are you standing upon? Because the information is creating an effect in this garden. And that effect is creating is not giving me allowance. So for me to thwart the purposes of God, I want to find out. So I'm on a research. What did God tell you? And the woman said, well, verse 2, God said we may eat. So God gave us access to the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3. But of the fruit, aha, uh -huh, Satan's attention is coming now. He says, this and that and that you shall not eat, neither shall you touch it. And then he said, what is the consequence? That if you touch it, you shall die. So an information tied to life and an information tied to death. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And then Satan does not say man, leave the garden. Satan does not say man, I command you to die. In fact, Satan does not say, man, stop having faith. He says, man, give me your attention. Next verse. The serpent said, ye shall not die. Do you know what he's doing? He did not touch their faith. He's redirecting where the faith is based upon now. They still need faith to believe this. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And the only thing he came was to withdraw nicely the information upon which their victory in the garden was predicated upon. And he shifted it and supplied another information. And they absorbed that information. Verse 5. It says, for God knows. For God knows. I write to you fathers, any father including God, that the advantage in fatherhood is knowledge. For God knows that the day you eat thereof, your eyes will be opened. And then you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. Now, he said, when the woman saw, notice what the information started doing. The information was like a drug. We are not aware that he touched her. He just supplied an information. The first thing the information changed was perception. The eyes. The eyes started coming under the influence of that information. And then number two, an appetite started coming out that was not there. Now, look at how words are powerful. You will now know why God is called the word of God. The compendium of the thoughts of God. This is how Satan sent man out of Eden. Is it not amazing that he never used a sword? My brothers and my sisters, the greatest battles are not fought with knives. The greatest battles are not fought with blood and arrows and guns. The greatest battles is the energizings that information does to people. And the Bible says here that when she saw that it was pleasant and good for food, the Bible says she partook of it. Ate. That information compelled action. He never touched her, but he made something that had entered her spirit and her mind to compel action. And then the Bible says that she gave unto her husband who was there and he did eat. Next verse. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sued fig trees. The long and short is he banished them out of the garden. This is the first official record in the Bible of man becoming a victim of Satan. This is the first official record of the warfare between man and Satan, and Satan won. 
So it means that we have to go back and study what weapon he used. And he used the weapon of words. Weapons of information. Are we together now? Yes. There is another way of doing ministry that can produce great results. That information comes. I can put something in your pocket and suddenly the power of God will multiply. You were moving in innocence, but an information came. I will tell you something about informations. I just needed to know that the real warfare of a believer is a battle of information. Satan wants your mind because your, your destiny is not just God dependent. It's also dependent on the information that runs you. Your faith cannot be based on nothing. And whatever something it is that is the pillar of your confidence, of your results, that's what Satan wants. Please listen to me. The information upon which your faith is built, that is his concern. Satan is not interested in your faith as it were. He's interested because faith is simply conviction on an information and the corresponding action you take to demonstrate that you are convicted. That's it. So if I tell Tosin, I say, Tosin, go and collect that handkerchief from this gentleman. Now faith can come because I have released a word. Is that true? Yes. That word will stop him from doing what he was doing before and compel him now to act. So when you see him move, you call it faith. But faith would never have been there except that an information came. Now, assuming he's on his way going and I now stop him and give him another word, I say, don't worry, go back. What did I do? I turned his whole life around using information. Listen to what I teach you. There is power in this. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. Will you open up the gate? for the gates of life to be open. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. I want to show you why information is power, both in the realm of the spirit and in this realm. I want to show you why words are so powerful. God protects it with his name and calls himself the word of God. God does not call himself um, the hand of God as it were. He names himself after information. If God names himself after information, that information created the heavens and the earth. Something was said and suddenly made bones that were hiding to come out. Something was said that made bones that were dead to come back to life. Something was said that made fishermen to not be interested in fishing again. I can stop whatever you are doing now, not by fighting you. I only need to introduce something to you. I can move your life by information. I can stop your life by information. I can help you to be anointed by information and I can destroy you by information. No wonder the founders of some of the great conglomerates around the world today, their product, the advantage is the vast access they have to information.
Google, Facebook. They are a threat today to national security. And the simple advantage is because they develop a psychological platform that compel the world to grant them access to information to the point that the US government has to call them. There are several cult groups today and everything that is discussed in those cult groups are privy information. Are we together now? Let me share with you the technology of words. I want to show you, that's not the topic for tonight. I want to show you why words are powerful. I want to show you why information is powerful. So that you will understand that every time a word goes before you, it's not just a time to jump. It's a time to begin to prepare. Because Satan is coming after that information. This charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare. I've sent you with an information. I've done my best. Timothy, hold that information and fight until you win. Let me tell you why words are powerful. Second Kings. I mean, not Second Kings. Ezekiel chapter 2. I sense a strong anointing in this place. Look up, please. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand up on thy feet, and I will speak unto you. Verse 2. And the Spirit entered me. Wow. When he spake unto me, and that Spirit, the word, just stop at my ear and the spirit continued the spirit started making my body to start acting in consonance with what was said now listen please that he wanted me to move from where I was to another place and he simply sent a word and when that word got to the gate of my ears it was not it, it had finished his work like a train Every other thing that entered me was no longer sound, it was spirit. And that when it entered me, like a drug reacting to a patient, have you swallowed a drug before? And then you stand and the contraindications begin to work on you. You start to feel drowsy and you are wondering. Remember, you didn't ask the drug whether you wanted to be drowsy or not. It entered you and started reconfiguring you. I know your action by what you have received. I look at your destiny and I can, I can trace your victory or your problem to the presence of information. What did God tell you? Your victory cannot be automatic. So, Eve, what did God tell you in your conversation with him? Because in Genesis, when you read Genesis chapter 2, it says, now the Lord came. The Hebrew word is the talking spirit. The spirit that speaks. The spirit that lives by speaking. The spirit that changes a man's life by speaking. Now listen. So for every word that is spoken, there is a spirit. The word spirit there does not just mean the Holy Spirit. It means there is an energizing. Words and information carry energy. They create a climate that compel action. This is where religion and science both agree. That words are powerful. They are shapers of perception. They are initiators of action words I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you your strength is based on something you have heard and your victory is predicated upon a, a spiritual information supply There is a medical condition called brain damage. There is also another medical condition called loss of memory. It happens a lot with old people. It's a state where because of whatever biological challenges, you no longer 
have the retention power you can forget your wife your husband and medical people agree that is a dangerous state for a man to be in there are people watch this who all of a sudden especially the elderly after 60 70 years of living on earth it could even be a pilot it could even be a professor just two months something affects the bank of information and the man can no longer walk his bones were not affected the information was withdrawn and he stands up and can no longer move and you ask him and say what is your name sir and he talks like a toddler the absence of information turn a man to a baby the technology of words words carry presence information carries energy whether they are spiritual information whether they are psychological information whether they are they are um, intellectual information that every time your the gate of your ears and your eye is open to information there is more that happens to you than awareness and enlightenment ladies and gentlemen now I want you to pay attention because I'm showing you a secret that is destroying our generation I show you the reason why men never stay until they win I show you a reason why very few people are victorious in this life do you know why because one of the worst things that happen to us on earth is a system that allowed information to go uncoordinated is one of the worst discoveries it is an advantage but what a, it was a galore for Satan when that happened there are still a few nations today now I'm not I'm not I'm not speaking political but there are a few nations today that still have some level from an earth realm from some level of sanity a bit and the reason why those nations have is the dictators the leaders there worked with the government to stop information dissemination is that true when you study um, stories of men like Adolf Hitler who led the campaign wanting to make Germany to speak about dominance there were chants and cliches that they continue to put it was on radio it was everywhere and all they were doing is indoctrinating the average German to believe he was superior and it worked he built an army not by recruiting men information terrorist groups today continue to recruit people not necessarily by force they propose information that can make a young man who is on his way becoming a doctor to suddenly turn and say I want to become part of a group and will be willing to die for it Whoever told you information is cheap whoever told you information is simple where God names himself the Word of God the information of God so every time words come to you here's the technology when a word is spoken or you come in contact with words or information the first thing that happens to you is your imagination is activated imaginations cannot be activated until there are words this is why words are dangerous words are the only instruments that have the power to activate imagery from where we get imaginations everybody look up imagine a yellow orange yellow orange big yellow orange now imagine that someone is cutting that orange with a knife are you seeing how whether you like it or not you are thinking what I'm saying you are not just hearing it I'm forcing your mind to move a direction by using the power of information now imagine a mother carrying a little baby imagine the baby trying to cry 
you, are you seeing how helpless your mind is? Provided the only way you can stop that imagination is to stop the information from reaching you. But once it is there, it has an ability that not even you can control again. Once it enters, it's like a drug. It starts to become an artist. It paints images about God, about life, about Satan. A little baby never believed that life can be hard till an information came. He heard the father or the mother say, Kai, this life self, this life self, and an image began to be created. And that image, listen, it is dangerous because the moment an image is built, your emotions are connected to the image. The moment your emotions are connected to images, creation begins immediately. This is how things manifest. Please, I want you to listen. You will thank me for what you are learning today. When the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, it knows what it's saying. That means control the information that enters into your spirit man because out of it, that information is not just words. That information is not just speakings. That information is a potential for creation that can make or mar you. What Elijah is playing now is not just music. What he's playing now, they are words. They are spiritual information operating at different frequencies and because your tripartite nature was designed to understand this your ears may not know what he's saying but your spirit man knows that is the reason why they can use music to calm people down that is why when music was played a demon left Saul the demon had something that Saul did not hear the ear of Saul was not necessary. Just allow the string enter. When it gets to the realm of the spirit, it will change back to words and the spirit will know what is being said. Listen to me. Nations today have gone to war simply because of information. Whole territories have been annihilated because of information. There are people today in hellfire because of information who has believed our reports to that man the arm of the Lord has been made revealed words carry spirits words carry energy and this is not some science nonsense I am telling you you literally can program your climate in less than a minute by the entrance. He said the entrance of your word give it light and understanding. That means show a confused man scattered in destiny. Just introduce the word of God to that person. And that's it. Your life will begin to reflect the information that you have. I'm saying this because, listen to me, our generation is very careless over our minds. Our generation is very careless over the power of words. In ministry, in life, people don't seem to have regard for words. Words are powerful. Words produce effects. Words can make. Words can destroy. Words can heal. Words can cause pain. Words are powerful. And if you understand this, words create imaginations and they connect us to those imaginations. When Satan wants a cause to remain in your family, he does not say cause remain. He uses words, the word of a priest, the word of an elder, words that have come from father to grandfather. Now you believe those words and when you believe those words, they create images. You are emotionally connected to those images and you are loyal to what you believe. That is the strength of the altar. 
the altar sits on your emotional connection to those words the day you stop believing those words you are ready for the power of God to smash that thing that's why when the Holy Ghost comes he now tells you are you not aware that there is another information Esther Listen, her man came and requested the king to approve an information. And an information was stamped already. And the death sentence of the people were waiting. They were going about every day. They did not know that they had finished killing them. By information. Even when her man died, they were still in trouble. Because the real enemy was not her man. The real enemy was the information. Esther knew that the death of her man had not yet solved that problem information and so Esther went to the king and said do you know what you have to write another information that can give an upper hand to preserve my people it was at that Esther chapter 6 that the story ends with honor and glory information words that's what they call a fool. many of you do it People have collapsed because of April Fool. Others have died and no opportunity to tell them I'm joking again. Now watch this. You go to an ATM to withdraw money. Remember the ATM does not speak English. You are just using your eyes. Withdraw for me 5,000 and the ATM says cash unavailable. Immediately that report depresses you. You stand there. A machine did not flog you. A machine did not speak your language. It only created an energy. Remember, you are smiling. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Bouncing to the ATM. And suddenly, because you punch and it said cash unavailable, you start thinking, this is how my life is. It did not ask you to think that way. While you are laughing, take seriously what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Satan waits until the information has been connected to your imagery then he comes he will create a system around it sit upon it and your doom becomes almost imminent this is the victory that overcomes what victory the labor in the spirit to protect the information it is real warfare and it produces real victory are you hearing what I'm saying now? There are, there are many of us here that are parents. Why do we prefer, now please, I'm, I'm, this is respectful with all my heart, but why will a parent prefer to carry a child to a mission school than an ordinary public school? It may not necessarily just be the standard. The parent wants to keep the child within a sociological sphere that regulates the quality of the information that is in the mind of the child. And to do that because it's not cheap, you will pay for it. That's the reason why a school where there can be people, there's no gate in and out. Anybody can lean on this class and suggest you can pay next to nothing. But there are people who pay millions per term on a child. And you are wondering, it is not only the knowledge they are paying for, they are paying for the atmosphere. Are we together now? When you go to Transcorp, or you go to any of these modern day hotels, you buy a cup of coffee and you can pay 5,000. Stroll 30 meters, 10 meters from that place, you will get the same coffee, hello, the same hot water, the same everything for less than 500 naira. So what did you really pay for? Because your access to that place can give you an information. You can be seated in a lounge when two millionaire businessmen are discussing and you will hear something that can be an advantage. You can be there when politicians are talking. So you are not only paying for tea, you are paying for the energy that you are receiving there. Why does Satan fight your coming to Koinonia? Did you hear the wonderful testimony of that, my dear brother? Why does Satan fight tooth and nail? He knows that it is not only the speakings of a man. That more than what you are hearing, there is a spirit. Please hear what I'm saying. Somebody testified that he got an alert. What did the alert do to him? 
notice he had not verified whether the alert would be reversed as soon as he saw it he just started becoming glad watch this a student stands in front of the board he's coming with his friend to check his result glory be to god i'm happy we'll all be graduates and he stands in front of the board and in two minutes he sees an information three carryovers and that person is there and for the next one week he cannot become himself again because an information came imagine that while he's standing there somebody just comes and says sorry it's a mistake it was not your number watch this. immediately he will change back now watch this look at how you are moving at the frequency of information like people who check admission list and don't see their names and they go back depressed and then they see a text congratulations say for what say you got admission say no you are checking your first name check your son name and you quickly check and that's your name immediately you start to dance the information did not tell you to dance it created an energy that supplied action are you getting what i'm saying now that means if words create imaginations that connect us emotionally to it then we must guard the words and the information that comes to us another thing with words is that they compel us to think and act in honor of the persuasions obtained to think and act in honor of the persuasions you receive an information that your loved one has gone to be with the Lord. That information does something to you. That's why you cry. That information does something to you. That's why you are gloomy and agitated. That information does something to you. The same way you receive an information, somebody just blessed you with a house. That information does something to you. Now listen to me, listen to me. When you become a master, at creating your own spiritual, emotional, and sociological climate, you have become a master indeed. Do you know why I'm saying that? Because for every open door you read, there are many adversaries. And guess how the adversaries act? They operate through words through words you will be promoted to a company as soon as you get there you'll be happy until you hear that there is tribalism in this company the moment you hear it it begins to affect you a believer has the responsibility please hear me in honor of your destiny in honor of the purposes of God you have a responsibility under God to set a guard not just over your mouth but over your mind to control the information unfortunately our world today is full of all kinds of information people have entered divination not knowing because in a bid to search for truth they stumble across Greek and Hebrew words who went to Latin words who went to ancient words who went to magical chants and before you know it they found themselves in all kinds of things I learned this about my life and I learned this from uncommon mentors and when I learned this it I made it a personal responsibility that my life I was going to guard with jealousy because the information that you are connected to ignites creation and sooner or later you will begin to see those information notice I am a doctor this is a patient he's feeling a little bit of pain in his side and then he comes to me and I run a test and I tell him sir you have cancer and based on this cancer I'm not saying doctors are wrong it is at stage four and usually statistics we built a statistics around this information that at this stage of cancer you have between six months to one year to live any other encouragement you give that man is a waste of time the information has entered let me tell you what will begin to happen my child is only nine years 
what am I going to do with my nine year old child and then the spirit of fear rides upon that information and comes I hope you know that there are cases that don't reach nine months fear is coming the next thing the spirit of suicide comes what good is living while all of this is happening watch this those possibilities will now be making all of these foundational things look strong and powerful as though they veto you and walk they depend on your partnership your reception of words now watch this he said young men the word of God abides in you that means when that kind of report comes there should be if you are a believer there should be war within your spirit if there is no war it's a sign that you are not holding the shield of faith and you are not an overcomer because it is expected that it should enter and meet another information and listen when the word went to hell there was war in hell are we together now Satan mimicking attempting to be the light bearer the word and then the word himself the logos of God there was war in hell and he triumphed over them and came out as the firstborn of the gotten the war happened in the realm of the spirit but the result was seen in the physical realm the war always happens in the realm of the spirit the death happens in the realm of the spirit the defeat happens in the realm of the spirit and all we see is the physical manifestation Satan and Jesus did not come to the earth and then they came out and said wow now we no 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 the battle was won there the keys were collected and he came out victorious and said all hail all power immediately he resurrected he spoke straight up there is something you need disciples come together in three days you had something that changed your mind little children come feed my lamb tarry in Jerusalem the Holy Ghost is coming information that's what he left them with when the angels came they said why look up you know to the sky this same Jesus you have seen he will return that became the basis of salvation the death the burial the resurrection of Christ Paul created a theology out of that information that is where we stand today he calls it the power of God unto salvation please listen to what I tell you our children watch cartoons and people get initiated why because of information notice that when these children here they start chanting what they are saying even if it's part of what they are saying whether or not they understand it and they become emotionally connected to it and it begins to affect them I write to you young men because you are strong fathers you know this you are equipped in knowledge but I write to you young men because you are strong I write to you young men because the Word of God is abiding in you and because of that abiding word Satan is going to come and when he comes fight what fight the fight of allowing the Word of God gain superiority he said let God be true and let every man be a liar this is the warfare of the believer I got a report from home in the name of Jesus let the word of God well up within me I decree and declare there is no death in my family there is no going down there is only rising up the hand of God is upon me you are fighting the warfare you are using that faith that the Bible calls is the victory I give you a guarantee there is one thing Satan does not have an indefinite power to survive it is the keeper of Israel that does not sleep nor slumber Satan can be weary But there are many weak believers we sit down and allow the devil shred our lives into pieces we sit down and allow the devil to take advantage do you know there are people right now who are like if you can imagine in the realm of the spirit imagine chains that are a result of several presents that came because of words you will fail you will die your life will not rise you are good for nothing and you sit down and it leads to depression 
the birth of anything valuable is painful it will require you knowing how to fight satan i'm saying this because this thing is killing people all over the earth internet people go online and type something go online and just put something bam, and they hear an information that depresses their life forever oh the job you did with that class there is a statistics like this that out of the so 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 million of graduates only three in ten years see let me tell you the truth and I submit to you many information on this earth are useless as far as your life is concerned as far as your victory is concerned you have an assignment to lean and help the spirit of truth to guide you into the truth that are necessary for your life if you expose yourself to just any and every kind of information you will lose the anointing you will lose relevance you will lose power your strength is in your protecting that information. You must guard yourself. Is God speaking to us? This gentleman sings. I can tell him one word. Your song is beautiful. It will take you around the earth. He can carry that information and be working with it until he meets a manager and the manager looks at him and says what tribe are you you are not this tribe mr man i don't want to lie to you i'm sorry another information creates presence listen we are going to pray tonight and many of you do not know that you are in them you are in the midst of different demonic energies that have come from words and because you are connected to these various things, they make good things look evil. It is this energy that will make good people look like devils. Even if somebody looks at you and says, nice hair, you say, nice hair for what? You are reacting to an energy. There are information that has come to you that nothing good will come out of your life. So it corrupts your perception. When God says, I want to lift you, like Mephibosheth, you say, am I a dog? God, go and lift others tonight we have come to tear these things it's why people don't prosper let me tell you it doesn't matter what kind of business you do the real business is the business of information is the reason why no great businessman will teach anything valuable everywhere they will call you and culture you and make sure you are ready to receive what they are telling you there was something Peter, James, and John saw and knew that the rest did not know. That was why they became the pillars. There are things God has shown me in my life about himself. There are things God has revealed to me. They become the objects of my protection because they are the pillars of my success. And if anything happens to them, then it will shred my life into pieces and I will continue to labor to protect them. Let me tell you this, your atmosphere is waiting for you to stand in faith and tear down that atmosphere. Otherwise, I don't care what kind of deliverance you do, you will get up and fall down. Your life will never change that atmosphere. I can stand in front of this guy and pick the signals of depression. I can stand in, not word of knowledge, I can pick the signals of discouragement. Why? Because I am also a spirit being and this guy has been programmed by an atmosphere. Let me tell you this. Human beings are simply walking atmospheres, carrying their possibilities around. And you have an assignment under God to fight this warfare of preserving your atmosphere, the insistence. It's called the faith that brings victory. You must be careful what you say to yourself. 
you must be careful what you say to others you must be careful what you hear from yourself you must be careful what you hear about others it is not the information it is the effect on your life on your destiny it is the effect um, a few days ago I, I was watching an interview between some of the billionaires in the world and I was shocked at the, they are so cultured words are expensive to them you see the way they speak and then I was watching CNN I don't know when was it I was just watching a, 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 an impeachment probe that that is going on and so on and so on and I mean you you could see the way those guys were meticulously words just one word not said correctly can be the and I said ah God grant me the grace to master words if my destiny is word dependent then do something to my life this is more than the ability to speak English this is the ability to make sure that your communications are cultured, seasoned with salt. Number two, to ensure that you have an atmosphere that is a shield. That faith, immune by the word of God. When death comes, it finds an information. When discouragement comes, it finds an information. You are enveloped in it. Just like that. The shield. Please hear me. The days that are coming will require this understanding. The days that are coming, you will need to be the prophet of your own destiny. The days that are coming, you will need to set a guard over your mind. Your prosperity depends on it. Your lifting depends on it. Those of us in ministry, listen twice. Let me tell you, the days that are coming, you must master the art of ensuring that your spiritual climate, that your intellectual climate, that your emotional climate is seasoned with the word of God. It's an assignment you must do because a lot depends on it. Let me show you one scripture and then we'll find a place to pray. Second Kings chapter 7. Please pray in the spirit in one minute. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. Hallelujah. Please look up. Watch this. Then Elisha said, this is the prophet, hear ye the word. He, he wants to change farming now. I want to show you the technology. Until now, Samaria is under siege to the point that women are eating their children. Do you think those women started eating their children like that? Somebody must have said something that made women to see their children as food because children are not food. Tomorrow about this time, information, everybody say words. Shall a measure of flying flour be, be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria? Next verse, verse 2. And then this other Lord said a lot of things. Simply because he did not fight the prophet. He fought the information that came from God. And there was a consequence. He said, behold, thou shalt see it with your eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. Next verse. Now, watch how God brings his word to pass. Look up, please. We're about to pray. There were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate. And they said... The spirit of prophecy made them to start saying to one another, Are you seeing how this thing works? They were not talking to themselves before, but an anointing came. As soon as that anointing came, information started coming. Why they said to one another, Why sit we here till we die? Was that the first time they were sitting there? They had been there. But see, every word is sponsored by spirits. Listen to what I tell you. When they were prophesying, I hope you know these four lepers did not hear it. 
they did not hear the prophecy but the spirit that went with that prophecy started searching for men and they were sitting they didn't even know a spirit had come upon them the next thing the urge to talk and they said why should we sit here and die and as soon as they started contemplating go back go to verse 4 if we say we will enter the city then famine is in this city and we shall die there and if we sit here we will die also please talk to me what has this got to do with four lepers sitting down it is not about leprosy it is creation about to happen but creation cannot happen until spiritual information come even for lepers even if you cannot walk you can hear It says, now, therefore, come. They are talking to one another. Let us fall onto the host of the Syrians. If we save us alive, we shall die. If they kill us, we shall but die. Look at this. These are people sitting at the gate, running away from hunger. And in minutes, courage comes upon them. And they make up their mind, let's just go and give ourselves to our enemy. If we die information now watch this verse 5 and they rose up what time at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians and when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria behold there was no man there what happened next verse hallelujah Mako Sibra Katushiata for the Lord made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise. He did something to their perception. They got an information. And I'm showing you how they ran away. They got an information and then even a great noise. And they said, the same way the lepers said to one another, this guy said to one another, no, the king of Israel had hired against us. Are you seeing what perception does? It gives you ideas that are not there. They, there was no business. The kings themselves were afraid. But here is an information making a weak man look strong. The king had hired against us the kings of the Hittites, the Egyptians, and so on and so forth to come upon us. Wherefore, they arose and fled also in the twilight and left their tents, their horses, their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. Eight. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink. And they carried silver, gold, raiment, and went and hid it, and came again, and entered into another tent, and carried all of this, verse 9, to tell you it was the Spirit of God. They now said, the same Spirit now made them to pass another information. It would have stopped at them stealing to run away, but the goal would not be achieved. The goal was the salvation of Samaria, not the healing of four lepers. So the Spirit now came, and still made them to say to one another again, we do not well. Same Spirit. Can you imagine that? One moment they are stealing and running away and happy. Next moment they are convicted and say we do not do well. This is the day of good tidings. And we hold our peace. If we tarry till morning, what if some mischief come upon us? Now therefore come, let us go to the king's house and tell him this good report. That king, we came and found food here. Four lepers were used to save a nation through the power of words. I'm showing you the technology. If one of those lepers, just one, said I'm not going, the rest would have been discouraged. It was the spirit of God that made all of them to unanimously agree. Man of God, let me show you where the next level of your ministry is. It's not just in a man. It is in an information. There is something you can hear. There is something you have heard. 
there is something you are hearing that is shaping your life literally we are products of the information that we have heard there is something koinonia has heard that has been the building block upon which the faith of God rests. There is something our families have heard that has authorized darkness to defeat us. Tonight in prayer is a warfare of words to stand to say, Lord, a generation depends on the quality of not only my spiritual enlightenment, but the warfare. My children are depending on the quality. Listen, let me tell you this. The Bible says, I think it's Mark 4 or so. Did I write it here? Mark chapter 4 and verse 24. Let me show you God's standard. It says, take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. That means hearing is also sowing when you hear it's like a farmer putting seeds and he said that if you hear you are drawing more of that that means you keep attracting more things to your life are you seeing why more tragedies continue to come to people because their minds continue to create the climate for it this is where it comes from it shall be measured to you and unto you that here shall more be given more of what you hear more of what you hear if you hear the word of God you hear things that build you more of it will come you hear about the anointing it will bring the anointing more of it will come you hear about that's why we must be careful now I minister deliverance and all of that but I have a little problem with talking about Satan and talking about demons every day and forever it is dangerous because more than the information you are trying to pass you are shaping the minds of the people to the point that they will never ever see victory again when Isaiah the year that King Uzziah died Isaiah told us what he saw he said I saw the Lord I saw the Lord son of man what seest thou you must choose what you hear Parus Kadia you must choose what you see words is a battle of destiny please understand what i'm telling you it's a battle of destiny words are like drugs the only thing is that they don't enter through your mouth once they enter your spirit they can keep you poor they can keep you less anointed but when you embrace the engrafted word it is able to make you this is the place of encounter. This is the place of surrender. To me, what you want. This is the place. Where my flesh gives way Do to me what you want This is the place Where my life is changed Do to me what you want The disciples went into hiding Because of something they heard As soon as Jesus resurrected He told Mary Magdalene he said run go and tell them this new information Jesus is alive he's risen the tomb is empty as soon as she went to tell them that information gave them energy listen you are dying today physically because of something that entered your ears something else must enter you tonight as the spirit something else I am able I am well able I am well able spies were sent. Ten of them came with something called an evil report. The Bible did not call it an honest report. It called it an evil. It was their perception they brought. And the Bible says I don't care if it's not the word of God. It's an evil report. And Joshua and Caleb said let's go up at once. He said we are well able. They were the only two that entered the promised land. Listen, 
Listen, you must make it a project to frustrate Satan in your life. You must make it a project to disallow. He is at the mercy of your understanding this truth. I write to you fathers because you have known. I write to you sons because although you do not know, you have strength. You can fight and experience can come out of your battle. That when you now become fathers, you can mentor other sons. I write to you fathers, young men, because the word abides in you. So when words come, it's a battle of words and you fight in the spirit to preserve those words. Listen, it said you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes. But what they received made them to speak. On the day of Pentecost, fire came on their head, but the reaction was speaking. They began to speak. From that speaking, 3,000 were saved. From that speaking, the church began to advance. Please hear me. Your destiny is bigger than your today. Man of God, this level of ministry is only the starting point. And let me tell you this. If you can hold on to that victory, the Bible calls the fight to protect God's information the victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. Overcomes. Lift your voice and begin to blast in the spirit. The victory that overcomes. The victory that overcomes. In the name of Jesus. The victory that overcomes. Even our faith. The victory that overcomes. Even our faith. The victory that overcomes. Even our faith. The victory that overcomes. Pray, be a speaking spirit tonight. Pray, be a speaking spirit tonight. Be a speaking spirit tonight. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Hear me. Hear me. It was through the power of prayer, a physical climate changed from a dry season to a rainy season. Any climate can change when we pray. Elijah prayed dry season to become rainy season. You are going to pray that every atmosphere and every climate that ministers death, that ministers discouragement, that in the name of Jesus, both the information and the atmosphere live my life. Speak to it. Speak to your childhood. Speak to your limitations. I come in the name of the Lord, the captain of the armies of heaven.
are praying. First Corinthians 14 verse 10. Read with me. One to read. There are, as it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without signification. That means no voice at all is just a social voice. No voice at all is just a technology voice. No, every voice is programming your destiny. Whether it is the voice of a mentor, the voice of the word of God, the voice of culture, the voice of your childhood, the voice of your family, you are going to pray. The Bible says bringing down every stronghold and every thought to the obedience of Christ. Lift your voice and tear down words and information. says while men slept the enemy came and sowed seeds and went his way but the Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father in the realm of your spirit and in the realm of your mind you are going to uproot and tear down by faith lift your voice and declare I uproot every speaking I uproot Every foundation, I uproot. Every perception, I uproot. Every communication that is not consistent with the character. Every communication that is not consistent with my goal, with my destiny, with my dreams. I come against it in the name of Jesus. Is someone praying tonight? Shamba <laughs> Break it, 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 break it,
Hallelujah. Please look up while still praying. There's a strong anointing here. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. But we need to know how we resist the devil in this kingdom. Matthew chapter 4, verse 10. Please give it to us quickly. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. Resist the devil. Matthew, help us media. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. This is how Jesus rebuked and resisted the devil. Then said Jesus to him, Get thee then, Satan, for it is written. That is the basis. It is written. Not I think, not I wish, it is written. The victory that overcomes is a victory that is written. Written. The logos. Get thee tense poverty, for it is written. Get thee tense limitation, for it is written. Lift your voice and declare, Satan away from my destiny, away from my life. It is written. And speak scripture. It is written. Hallelujah. Prophet Joel. Prophet Joel taught us a very deep mystery. In chapter 3, please give it to us, we are praying. Chapter 3 and verse 10, Joel. Joel 3 and verse 10. Beat your plowshares into swords 
In other words, it's time for the fight of faith. And you're pruning forks into spares. This is not just a time for harvest. It's a time for warfare. And then he says, in that warfare, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You are about to say so now. This is strategy. Everything the Bible says you are, everything the word of God says you are, you are about to say it now. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy. I am strong. In the name of Jesus, I am blessed. If someone pray, I am anointed. My business is flourishing, pray. The ministry is flourishing by the spirit. My home is flourishing by the power of the Holy Ghost. My finances is flourishing by the spirit of the Christ. I go from glory to glory. I go from grace to grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. And listen to me. You are going to declare. The Lord spoke to us that this is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. You are going to pray and prophesy. It must be as he said. It must be as he said. Over every area of my life. Lift your voice now and begin. It must be as he said.
Job chapter 5, verse 19. Job chapter 5, verse 19. We'll read 19 and 20. Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. Are we there? He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven shall no evil touch you. Verse 20. In famine. This is the first kind of trouble that comes upon men in the earth. Famine. He shall redeem thee from death. In war. He shall redeem thee from the power of the sword. 21. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field. Listen, this is a mystery that one day God will grant me the grace to teach in this place. The word league is covenant. That you will be in, in a covenant with the stones of the field. And the beast of the field shall be at peace with you. Listen, he said in six troubles, yes, seven, he shall deliver you. You are about to pray these prayers. In famine, in war, the speakings and the tongues of men, Lord, arise by the Spirit. And let my life see your salvation. Let my life see your salvation. Lift your voice and pray. Are you praying? Arusha la Praise the Lord. Just two or three more prayer points and we are done for the night. Listen to me. You are going to cry to God and ask the Holy Spirit to be the administrator of your atmosphere. Listen. It's a powerful prayer. He is called the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. The protector of your atmosphere that your mind will always remain at the presence Samuel had the voice of God because he was lying down close to the ark you are going to pray spirit of the Lord 
you were sent to guide me into all truth. Guide me into the truth formation that will build faith in me for the days that come. Lift your voice and begin. Please lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The wisdom of God. Spirit of the living God. Guide me to all truth. Take away your necessity for my life. Lead me to information. Lead me to scripture. Lead me to revelation. Lead me to understanding. That build my life. That build my destiny. Boy, no, is this your prayer? Is this your prayer tonight? Is this your prayer tonight? Guide me to all truth. Truth for my destiny. Truth for my finances. Truth for my life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, Declare ye that ye might test be justified. That means your bailout, your vindication in the realm of the spirit is predicated upon your declaring. Declaring what? What is written? Listen. The word of God that is allocated for every area of your life to produce victory. You are not going to spare. You will speak. Listen. Listen. I told you that words carry energy. They carry presence. They create imagery. They connect your emotions to those images. And then they make for creation. This is the technology of information. You are going to pray over anything in your life that must change in this season. That must change. You are going to enforce the word of God with power and grace. I'd like you to lift your, your voice. Mention the area that must change. Place a demand. Don't let the devil speak things to your ears. Is it your finances? Is it your family? Is it your spiritual life? Listen to me. You can create a new effect. You can create a new atmosphere. You can create a new image. You can win. The word of God abides in you. Open your mouth and declare, declare, declare. In the glory and the power, I see miracles, signs and wonders. In the glory and the power. I'm a sign and wonder.
about life my perception about God my perception about my circumstances my perception about Satan do a miracle to my sight lift your voice and pray do a miracle change my perception every image every emotional connection to every image that is birthing pain, that is birthing impossibilities, that is allowing darkness to reign over my life. Change my perception. Koinonia pray a miracle of the seen eyes. Change my perception. The Bible says, for we know that all things work together for good to them who love God and who are the called according to his purpose. Lift your voice and pray. Change my perception. Change my financial perception. My spiritual perception. My career perception. My sociological perception. My emotional perception. Let my perceptions be lined up to and with the world. Let my perceptions be lined up to and with the world. Change my perception in the name of Jesus. Change my perception. My perception of ministry. My perception of life. My perception of my family. My perception of increase. My perception of your purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's have the last prayer point for tonight. Listen. The victory of the believer is in staying and hearing and seeing the word of God. But we all with unveiled face beholding us in a mirror, we are changed into the same image, not another. You will become the reality of the information that enters your life. You will become weakness when you hear weakness. You will become weakness when you hear weakness. You will become strength when you hear strength. Listen to me. You will become powerful when you hear power. You will become full of faith when you hear faith. You will become a man of speed when you hear words of speed. You will become revived when you hear words of revival. You will become a man of fire when you hear words of fire. Listen, your thinking makes your belief system and it translates into who you are. You have an assignment 
to from today and forever protect yourself protect yourself protect yourself from the influence the arsenals of culture the arsenals of satan the arsenals of past your past the arsenals of your weakness career whatever it is make up your mind that you sustain the stamina to stay on that which is written for the bible says listen to me that heaven and earth will pass away but this word abides forever the bible says he upholds all things not by ideas by the word of his power so no matter what you are going through in your life you are not defeated if what is written is still in your mouth joshua chapter 1 and verse 8 i'm rounding up this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night consistently that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein then and only then shall thou make your way prosperous and thou shall have good success last prayer lord jesus magnify your word and the voice of the holy spirit above every other voice and influence in my life lift your voice and pray magnify magnify if someone pray magnify your word above my circumstances magnify your word above my limitations magnify your word above ministry magnify your word if someone pray lord i want to see your word exalted be lifted high, be lifted high, oh Lord, be lifted high, for you are holy, righteous and holy. of degree you finish with. take weak men and set them as kings and princes it is within the power of God to prosper a man please listen to what I tell you it is within the power of God to keep
keep a man. It is within the power of God to bring deliverance and to bring salvation. It is within the power of God to give you a new name that the mouth of the Lord himself will call. Lifted. Exalted. That when you stand through life, anything that is not the word of God, you have an assignment to fight that fight. It's not a weak fight, it's a great fight. Until that which is written becomes your experience. Until everything that you see is Jesus. Until everything that you see is his grace, his life, his power, his wisdom. Until everything you see is that what you saw in your dreams and your vision now becomes your experience. You continue to set your gaze on Jesus until you see that anointed version of you that you saw in your dream. No matter what you see in your life, don't let men clap you to your grave. If it has not become what you saw, keep pressing. Lord, I thank you, but I keep seeing. We are able to go out and take the country to possess the land from Jordan to the sea. Though the giants may be on our way to hinder, God will surely give us victory. We are the generation that is well able. Regardless of your background, you are well able. It may not look like it until the word of God gains ascendance. Your assignment is to believe his report and to stay there. Apostle, but you do not understand. I didn't get admission. Apostle, as I am right now, I don't even know where the next meal will come from. Apostle, I've prayed and fasted for the anointing, for things to move in my life. It doesn't matter what it is. My brothers hear me. My sisters hear me. You are only victorious when you stand on God's side. Stand. Continue to exalt his word. Lift it above. Once he stands above, you will see what that word will do. It will become not only an anchor, it will become a cover. It will become the basis for your victory. Hear me? Even the hand of God wrote twice. That means whatever was written can be rewritten. Did you hear what I said? The hand of God wrote once and wrote again for Moses. Isaiah, go back to Hezekiah. Tell him I have changed my mind. Hezekiah, there is no death for you again. Please pay the price to know God. Pay the price to know God. Hezekiah, you will continue to be king. I have shifted the song to prove to you that I have rewritten. Esther meets the king and says, write again, O king. It was her man that deceived you to write. You wrote death. It is within your power to write life again. And the king said, bring me the paper. And he wrote and stamped it. Hear me? No matter what has been written over your life, I stand by the word of God. Listen to me. In this kingdom, please hear me. There is a heavy anointing on me. I want to pray for you. Listen. It says, my heart is indicting a good matter. Yea, I speak of excellent things. It says, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. I want to write something in your life by the Spirit. It is true that what was written can be rewritten. Mm. Please, you don't have to kneel. You don't have to kneel. Please stand. It is true that the ordinances and the appointments of death, the appointments of failure, it is true that the expectations of wicked people waiting, believing that your family will not amount to anything, that your life will go down. Tonight I stand by the Spirit, indicting a good matter 
He said, yeah, I speak of excellent things. And he says, my tongue is a pen of a ready writer. I stand by the God of heaven who calls men by his grace. I declare whatever was written that is an appointment unto death, I change it and I speak life to you now. Hear me. If Esther did not come to Mordecai, it was not only, if Esther did not come to the king, it was not only her man. Hear me, look at me, let me teach you a mystery. If Haman died and Israel died, God lost. The verdict that was in the presence of the king was not just for Haman, it was also for Israel. And Esther came and said, King, write again. The verdict that plagues families and plagues individuals, hear me, it is not only for your grandfather alone, it affects everybody. It is not only for Nigerians alone, but we are standing like midwives, like Esther, to say, King, write again. In the name of Jesus, every appointment unto derision, unto death, unto causes, unto woes, I stand as one who stands by the election of grace and I declare that ordinance is changed over your life. Please help them. That ordinance is changed over your life. Hear me. It was unfortunate for Herod. Herod spoke against Peter. And he was speaking against the gospel. But there were saints who were praying. There was nobody to advocate for Herod. Herod fell from his throne, died immediately, and worms came out of his body. They are taken for a prey, and none say it, restore. Listen, restoration is advocated for through the power of prophecy. I decree that anything that has become a programming over your life and destiny to sabotage the purposes of God over your life. I stand by the power of words and in the name of Jesus, we create a new outcome for you. To see you high and lifted up Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you There are many of us today our parents are angry with us why because they want you to follow the path they followed and the word of God is already telling you that ah they like the way their lives are and they they do not believe that something they are doing is why their life is like that they tell you just follow don't please don't embarrass us just let it be like that oh i want to get married to who eh, the brother he's starting up mm, don't do that you see if you do this we are going to beg are you not seeing the way our lives are and then people control people and we are victims of men's thinking there's a lot of gap let me tell you something you need to re-examine the concept of age this thing called age 
the most excellent part of age is the wisdom attached to it if age fails to come with wisdom it is useless did you hear what i said yes that a man i'm not you know we have i have i have so much respect for elderly people you're elderly here i honor you with all my heart but i'm teach. we need to redefine our philosophy of i am old and i am young because there are many old people that are responsible for the pain of people on earth age gives you access it should give you wisdom only age does not just add wisdom on its own at best it can give you sophia human knowledge the fact that you made a mistake does not mean you have found the answer so you can tell us in 1961 i made a mistake did you find the answer you may still be in that ignorant at that point you are just familiar with the problem not the solution how many old people mentor young people you are about to marry and oh no problem i remember i married in 1941 that asked that man's wife whether she enjoyed marriage see her an old woman she would tell you i only enjoyed marriage for three weeks in 40 years that's the person mentoring two people and he said listen to me no i won't listen to you no sir i will respect you but i reject that kind of life you will not define that template for me Do you know why God is called the ancient of days? You know why? The, he is called the ancient of days because of one word, wisdom. Take away wisdom because Satan too is an ancient of days. He's old. The Bible tells us Satan is old. What is the difference between him? At least they are old enough. I think any man that is older than 6,000 years is old satan is not six thousand years old before six thousand years he was already called that old serpent yet he's as foolish and stupid as whatever because it is only a fool that says in his heart there is no god and the bible says even the demons they 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 try to ignore it so they deceive men into believing there is no god get your life into your hands and trust god to use the word of god as a compass and redefine your life because there are many of you looking at me right now we are doing what we call jack of all trades master of none this is how they taught me to live oh this is how i will live i have my little job with nmpc another person has a job with one uh, one para paramilitary and then we are on our way going we don't know the purpose of children so we abuse them people give birth anyhow and make the children liabilities to men and society you just come and somebody passes a child to you and say take care of my child as if as if the person was part of the arrival of the child why because the people doing that do not know the revelation behind abba abba father if before you source a thing you must be ready to sustain it this is what should govern getting pregnant no time do we have the resources the wisdom the grace the capacity for a child if a poor man gives birth to seven children he's a foolish man correct not just because he wants to demonstrate that he can give birth he is abba source you must sustain so you leave those children and they become armed robbers remember i told you satan is looking for bodies and because those bodies cannot be handed over to God, Satan will find available bodies and they plague our society today, kill people, rape women and children, maim people, destroy the peace of society. We have violated the dominion mandate. And this is why this teaching is very necessary. Are we together? Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. The original plan was what I discussed. I spoke to us extensively about the fall of man. And I spoke to us about how that redemption was a remedy system. Now that you are born again, you must be able to have a redirection back to God's original agenda. And I said a few things to us. I said how that there are certain conditions that are required. Number one is your natural birth. For you to be able to stand and execute the dominion mandate. One, 
is your natural birth you must be birth, born of a woman because when jesus came he came to redeem all those who were descendants of adam listen let me teach you something everybody look up hmm. the blood of jesus is only applicable for descendants from adam if you were not part of that dispensation the work of grace and the cross is not relevant to you otherwise satan and demons should also be forgiven because a statement was made on the cross it is finished what is the it everything that had grieved the heart of the father the legal claims of justice had been appeased the bible says he shall see the travail of his soul isaiah saw and he shall be satisfied so if he says it is finished that means the demons that neglected their original estates that are now in everlasting chains alongside satan i've told you satan is not the most wicked of the spirit no he's not the belief that satan is the most wicked of all the spirits the king of all the spirits is is not necessarily error it's just a limiting knowledge because satan is not bound in everlasting chains there are spirits more wicked than him that are bound in everlasting chains the bible says that they were bound even for the sake of the elect are we together I pray that God will give us wisdom. You see how peaceful your life will be? This is what Satan does not want us to know. Man of God, listen. This is what Satan does not want your congregation to know. Because if you don't know this story, you won't see the necessity of your victory and you will not know that you have been restored to now begin to walk in dominion. And demons will play games with your life. They will play games with your destiny. You will live your life under the mercy of situations and circumstances. so your natural birth then your spiritual birth or what i call a rebirth the bible calls it a regening regeneration regime every possessor of adam's genes born of a woman is born in iniquity are we together now born in iniquity means that legally you are under the influence of satan the prince of the power of the air as wrong as well as the elements in this system and you cannot carry out the dominion mandate with the genes of adam so there is a regening a regeneration are we together now when jesus christ comes into your heart a real miracle happens there the bible tells us there is a translation the bible says he that is joined to christ is what help me one spirit one spirit not two spirits one spirit so christ comes to live in you he creates his throne in your heart tabernacles in you in the person of the holy spirit now watch this the moment that happens you are now ready not to dominate you are not ready to dominate you are ready to now begin the process that restores you back to god's original agenda the dominion mandate now this is where many believers miss it and pastors ah, pastors if you do not understand the difference between prophecy and experience you will mislead people the speakings of the bible are twofold the prophetic communications of god are we together now and the experience of that communication when god speaks from his perspective it is done because god has no past no present no future he's called alpha omega time is not something that god is limited by he's not even limited by eternity eternity is still a subset of him if he dwells in eternity then somebody created it correct Are you getting blessed tonight and so you must understand that this god that we are talking about is not limited you must understand his systems and how he works when god speaks he can say sam when you enter that house and by the time your fifth child comes you see that 
and some can say i'm not even married that's the speaking of god god will never say when you marry uh -uh. he talks to men as if he's talking to himself this is how, this is why many people do not know god can look at you and say promise take care of these 30 children whereas he doesn't have a job that's god because in his word is also the grace to convert that prophecy to experience so he will not speak to you like he's speaking to a man let me tell you one way to know that a word came from god is that there will be no resources at that point to make it come to pass whether spiritually financially etc if god speaks to you and you have the resource to do it you had your brain or a demon noah build me an ark to stadium two stadium of i mean the ark of noah was stadiums too like that are made of gopher wood how many years plantation agriculturist will give you that noah spent 120 years building that how many years 120 years but the way God spoke it, it was as if rain will come next week. This is a mistake many people make. God can say, I have sent you today. This is how God speaks. Because your whole lifetime is still his today. So God says, today, I have anointed you as a prophet to the nations. Then you get up with lack of understanding the systems of God. And now ordain yourself and try to get visa to Ghana or smuggle your way to UK. And you die somewhere in the forest. And it there will be is it a lie no god spoke to you but you did not understand the difference between prophecy and experience it was paul who was teaching the church in hebrew and began to teach them in chapter 2 and told them he says now god did not leave anything under the feet of man are we together now he was trying to quote um, the the psalm of david right what is man that thou art mindful of and then he says but now that's experience in God's eye and in God's mind, nobody should be sick. In God's eye and in God's mind, there should not be one sinner on earth. Because right from the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. Go to the prison. Is there a thief there? Please answer me. Is there a thief that went into the prison today? Yes. So does that mean that the efficacy of the word is not working? No, it is. He already said it is finished. And they are still criminals it is finished there are still barren people god will look at someone on a wheelchair and still say it is finished yet he's still there the day that the anointing and the faith of that person comes he enters into the experience of that word that's why god is resting but he says there remaineth a rest not for god for his people what is that rest the experience of his finished work so we keep moving around with ignorance and making a fool out of ourselves and demons are happy and hope we continue like that and then at the end of it the equation does not add up and then we are frustrated and humiliated is god helping us tonight tonight we are going to look at the second aspect and that is discipleship the dominion mandate has three segments number one is a revelation of the original plan the fall of man and the restoration through jesus that's the first the second is discipleship what is discipleship a system of training for reigning a system of reprogramming a system of recalibration into the image and the likeness and then next week we are going to look at the third segment governance so these three segments number one the original plan the fall of man and the restoration process that we call redemption the second is discipleship discipleship is not some some doctrinal curriculum of people no it is the way people are trained to carry out the dominion mandate listen nobody reigns just because you have received jesus remember the scripture that i gave you last week right that they that received two things number one the gift of righteousness 
Number two, the abundance of grace. So two requirements to reign. One, you must receive what? The gift of righteousness. No man can walk. It is God's very nature imputed through faith when you believed in the finished work of his son his death the burial the resurrection and the glorification not just the resurrection jesus did not just ascend and is hanging in the sky he is seated it matters because Ephesians starts with the revelation of his seated position so it's not just the death i know great men like kenyon and all of that talk about the death burial resurrection but it's more than that the death the burial the resurrection and the glorification that coronation was what david saw the lord said to my lord the lord the ancient of days said to my lord the christ sit down at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool hallelujah discipleship why why discipleship let me tell you something because you see when you receive jesus christ everybody listen carefully when you receive jesus christ automatically it gives you access the life of god is in you give us genesis chapter 1 please verse 26 god created man there was a twofold design and this design this configuration must be gotten back for man to be able to walk in dominion number one is what his image the first purpose of discipleship is to carve in you the experience of the image of the christ the spiritual dimension the spiritual composition are we together now paul said this he says my little children in whom i travail until christ be formed in you the formation of christ in reality the indwelling of the word is a reflection of his image because the bible says let us make man in our own image and the bible says christ who is the word is the express image of the godhead he that has seen me has seen the father are we together now Philip said, show us the father. And then it's sufficient. He said, Philip, have you been so long with me, Philip? And yet you have not seen the father. Whoever has seen me has seen the father. So Christ came as the image. So man must first be made in Christ. Now listen. Let us make process. Let us make process. The moment that life of God comes, the making is not automatic. The life is there. The spirit of God is at work in you. If it were automatic, then you do not need the word and you do not need the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The formation of Christ. Now, please, everybody listen. This is one of the indices for spiritual growth. The moment believers get born again, if you have ever wondered what next let me tell you what next is the spiritual development of those people so that the life the character and the traits of christ will be fashioned in them are we together now the image so pastors apostles prophets evangelists together that fivefold ministry they work harmoniously to help people achieve this are we together the image of christ being formed in you that's what you call character that's what you call the fruit of the spirit the fruit of the recreated human spirit when you read galatians chapter 5 verse 16 paul was teaching the galatian church and he said this i say then please give it to us galatians 5 and verse 16 we'll read 16 then we'll go down to 22 he says this i say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh so the key is what walking in the spirit you must be trained to walk in the spirit the bible says to set your minds on the things above and not on the things of the earth it takes a training the name of that training is discipleship discipleship is not just an indoctrination into a church's curriculum and beliefs are we together because many of us hate the word and i understand because it has been used religiously by people who are not even born again discipleship is how people are made to reign verse 22 
it says but the fruit of the spirit there are all kinds of theological understandings but the fruit of the spirit is love listen joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance he said against such there is no law meaning that it is impossible to be a violator with these conditions this is the atmosphere of the spirit the fruit of the spirit combined creates an atmosphere that becomes formidable no power and force of hell can penetrate that all these things you call the fruit of the spirit are and they are ingredients that structure something the bible says that we are built into a spiritual house like living stones one block upon the other you are adding love joy peace patience gentleness let me tell you every attack on a believer's life comes when there is a lapse in one of these are you hearing what i'm saying listen are, are we learning am i am i blessing you every attack on your life will come based on an advantage that was taken as a result of the absence or the deficiency of this from where comet um how does the bible put it quarreling and all this among you you see that when there is no love there will be jealousy when there is no love there will be bitterness when there is no joy the bible says for with joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation is that true it says the joy of the lord is your strength when your spirit is weak there is no joy joy is not laughter joy can only be given by the spirit unbelievers have happiness only believers can have joy is of the holy ghost joy has nothing to do with circumstances it is a state of being that is based on a revelation and the presence of the holy ghost count it all joy my brethren when you go through die how can you rejoice knowing this knowing this this is the secret of the joy knowing this without knowing it you cannot have joy so when you are going through diverse situations you lost a loved one you lost a job something is not working well ordinarily you should be sad but knowing this there is a revelation that the trying of your faith work at patience and then that let patience have her full course then it will make you mature it will make you unfruitful knowing this hallelujah are we blessed we must build the fruit of the spirit in people you can be educated as educated as anything and lack gentleness goodness meekness and never be promoted correct you went to school but you are not gentle at all the company throws you away because you lack the fruit of the spirit do you know all the the commandments of nigeria are a human attempt to get men to have the fruit of the spirit so when they tell you pay a bill of hundred thousand naira and all of this is their own way of trying to force you to feel the pain of stealing somebody's thing it is their way of trying to give you love when they jail you because of impatience they are trying to get you to be what to have long suffering because you are not patient that's why you wanted one million in one day and you jump somebody's fence or you stopped a luxurious bus let me tell you the chaos in our society is because there is the absence of the image the charisma, the image of christ every law when you whip your child it is because he violated something that is here when a husband beats a wife something is missing peace sister when a brother comes to say i want to marry i want to marry you do you know why you don't say yes immediately you go back and start cross-checking you don't even know this is what you are cross-checking does this guy love me it's not just love god alone does he have joy this brother is an angry brother peace i watched what he did to somebody one day long suffering this guy looks like a hustler he puts his hand in everything is he gentle no the way he approached me was bad is he good no he's greedy does he have faith he come you know and all of that and when you calculate all those things the other side of the equation creates your response and you go back and say no now you may not know 
that this is what you were checking when someone is advising you he's helping you society can never go into decadence when the image of christ is enforced the image of christ is the unifier whether you are from kogi state plateau state listen to me whether you are yoruba or Igbo, all those disparity in culture that is as a result of bad habits can be neutralized if the image of christ is formed in believers so when you see someone who is hausa and someone who is um Igbo or someone who is yoruba or someone who is from the south south four of them you will not see any noticeable differences why because they have allowed the genes of adam that was a part of the course that came through their earth and programmed something oh the men from this place are stupid the men from this place are irresponsible when you allow the character are we learning the dominion mandate it says man was made in the image it was not possible for adam to hate it was not possible for him to be impatient how did man fall because there was a pastor that said something satan became that preacher that's why when god came he said who told you not who showed you a voice reprogrammed you so how will men return back to this a voice will reprogram men the spirit of god is in his words as you are hearing this something is happening to you you are now seeing that this is not the issue of marry from here or from here this is not the issue of i am from bielsa i am from south south in our place this is how we do it all those our place when you talk like that let me show you whose descendant you are on earth there are two families one those who are connected to adam and everything adam came with two those who have been regined 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 into another family so you cannot look at me and say you come from so so place your people are drunkards i don't know who they are i've been called out of every tribe genesis please give us revelations 5 verse 9 i want you to read it god has to deliver us verse 9 1 2 no gen um revelations 5 media 5 verse 9 revelations revelations let's read it one okay verse 9 5 verse 9 thank you okay read it one to go and they sung a new song uh -huh, saying thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof for thou was slain and has redeemed me unto god how by your blood out of kogi plateau state emo enugu out of the irresponsibility that comes with the men in that place out of the pride out of the selfishness out of the hatred the bitterness he has redeemed i've been called i sympathize with my people but i'm not part of that tragedy i am another tribe i've been carved out listen if you don't believe this thing you are not a christian it's not just that it's bad you are not a christian at all what else do you believe we have been called that's why in koinonia here you don't see anybody do anything which tribe i don't even want to know where you are coming from i know that there are two families the ones on earth and the ones in heaven we are all related the blood the veil torn a family no we no man after the flesh oh your father is this i'm not saying don't be sympathetic to people in your area or whatever jesus started preaching from the jews but some of this carnality this tribalism and this these garbages we bring there is a thief in every tribe there is a fool in every tribe there is a devil in every tribe every tribe has witches and wizards there are poor people in every tribe so it's just that we, you know we make it look just because you saw more northerners looking stupid you come up with a theology that there are all more evil people and say every evil person is it's just money monger it's a lie there are people who have exempted themselves called out not everybody is a money monger not every lady is a materialistic person just looking for a millionaire it's a lie not every brother is an irresponsible person not knowing where he will go some people have seen the end they have seen you know what i'm doing to you is a reprogramming this is discipleship i am unifying you now 
it is on the strength of this you can call somebody brother and sister that issue of brother and sister for many people is carnal it's just carnal because you were told to say it brother um, alpha brother femi and the rest but when men like kenneth e hagen rw shambach when they used those names it was out of this revelation i do not know you in the flesh but if you are in christ we are brothers you are welcome they extend the right hand of fellowship everybody say the image we need the restoration of that image there are many people who are not spiritual live likeness we're coming there we must teach you how to be like christ be like christ be like christ that's the image the image talks of being the likeness talks of doing the image talks of being being who you are not what you do let's go back to genesis please give us verse 28 we'll discuss more 28 um next next week 1 verse 28 genesis now everybody i want you to observe something and god blessed them and said listen carefully be fruitful he never talked of having anything you be it first then later on he now said have dominion so god's focus when he's beginning to work with man is in being first before having we have reversed it somebody gets born again today and we say you must have you must have a car you must have a house which is he he's having something he has not become he's trying to have the likeness no image so one million naira comes he has but he has not become so it will destroy him are you saying that now yes have a wife but he has not become a husband so it destroys him the primary strategy and pattern god's kingdom pattern for discipling people and nation is to focus on their being before they are having listen those who write programs for foundational classes in churches must subscribe to this otherwise you are going to produce a powerless carnal many times devilish believers that's why there are witches and wizards in church because we are passionate about having so if i am born again and in two weeks i come with a flashy shoe flashy cloth i'm showing you how much i help me preach back to me i'm showing you how much i on the strength of that you will say i have faith and the brother who has just one trouser but the gift of the spirit the fruit of the spirit is working in him we look at him and we say no this one you don't have so because you don't have the word is not working our focus is on having spiritual men rank and rate people first by being so i can look at you and all you have is one trouser one bible but i see christ formed in you you are on your way fulfilling the dominion mandate i know that this guy will soon be a principality listen believers let me preach to you stop focusing on having focus on being first the image comes before the likeness it's god speaking to us this is a message to someone already because our society is full of falsehood men and women who are obsessed in having having why because we want to prove we live in a carnal world that only interprets and rates you based on what they can relate with none of these fruits of the spirit is something that is tangible in itself their manifestation can be tangible as you relax you relate with people and environment but you cannot know so i look at this brother and what he has is peace what he has is joy and i think those things are cheaper than money so the brother would rather kill the agenda to being and then focus on having when god begins to deal with a man you find out that the curriculum he gives you has nothing to do with things like teaching of prosperity is going to be prayer first 
you are filled with the holy ghost are we together and then you begin to teach he's drumming on you issues of character holiness morality you have to greet people you move around and think i am from this i am a yo-yo guy I, and he says look drop all that thing oh i am the nobody talks to me i was a capon in this and god says that's that's your business and when you want to mess up he tells you listen nebuchadnezzar was not what he had he had money he had power so he could run his mouth and talk nonsense and then he was made to become a beast for how many years seven years a beast with the brain of a man the moment nebuchadnezzar recovered he became a preacher read your bible never empower people who have not become it's dangerous it's a lesson many of us will have to learn that you are a millionaire does not mean you carry a small child who has not become and give him money that's why i like Igbo people when they are doing business they bring in an apprentice no matter how rich that man is there is a limit to the exposure of that child is that true he now begins to do business and they study him one day they will leave money in the drawer five hundred thousand and throw some small things scattered and then the man will go out he will come back and find out that one thousand was missing and he will keep quiet that boy has not become the day he ever says settle me the man will say i will slap you. if you ever talk of settling you have not become you want to have you have not learned integrity you have not learned character you have not learned submission no hmm. is god teaching us being have you become an expression many of us today i can show you that the reality of god's image has not been found formed in you because that anger is still there you've been born again for five years you pray in tongues more than everybody but let somebody just say something small your name is sam and somebody just said uh, john uh, sorry what's the name you don't know my name look i i i know who i am if you do this is you think it's a sign that you are spiritual no I can look at your life and rank you spiritually in a moment i don't have to see a vision away with your cars away with all the money and the checks and all the prestige and the english and etc all those things could not having i look at your life when i look at your life i'm searching for the christ the word of god already painted a picture and then he says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus then the bible says he had something and was something but he gave them up and became 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 not possessed the possession happened when he became therefore god had so highly exalted him and given notice that people first became before they had the secular system reverses it packaging and falsehood is trying to portray something you are not so i borrow a shoe i borrow a suit i borrow watch are we together i borrow makeup i borrow hair i borrow anything what am i trying to do it's not that i i'm trying to show you i'm not cheap bottom line correct whether i'm cheap or not is 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 my own issue but i want you to know i am so conscious of what your perception about me that i don't mind faking everything around it but someone can sit down with gary and say no problem i'm not ashamed this is where i am now i will take it with honor and dignity if i don't look if i look cheap to you like that no problem i agree with the process but i am becoming next time somebody looks at you and tries to make you feel like you are a useless person you you cannot do this and that no problem you are becoming you are becoming line upon line this is what is happening to you in koinonia many of you do not know what is happening to you god has already given you a vision you will be a great prophet a great apostle but you are saying oh god nobody has seen me god says sit down you are becoming you want to have access to the mic you want to have access to a church your body is itching you to have access to lead a program and god says sit down you first become before you have is god speaking to us mm. discipleship leaders 
learn to discern people who have become before you give them access don't give people access as a general thing if there are four people three people you now say oh you have given you too much access let me share it with this no in the kingdom distribution is be, be, as a result of a careful study i have discerned you can fake all those things and act like it but the truth is that if you are not it will show he said by their fruits not by their gifts by their how do you know them by their a gift is dash a fruit is a sign of maturity so someone insults you and says emeka do you know that when you were entering the university i already had phd and that thing stings you and you're like i'm a doctor or don't talk and the old man adam Adam wants to resurrect with his foolishness and all of a sudden that regining has been crystallized and you laugh and say God bless you ah, ah. and he says is it the Emeka that I know that used to beat everybody I heard of a regining let me tell you if you claim you are born again and there is no evidence of transformation you need help you need counseling you need a retreat praise the Lord there are so many there are angry pastors they are wicked pastors they are angry people they are all kinds of arrogant people my name is so 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 and so and so do you know the one you we, we are looking at you and we are still seeing your culture if i still look at you and see your village then you are trying to say that calling out of tribe and nation has gone it's not it's not yet real discipleship training for reigning bringing you into the culture of the kingdom their way of life this is how we live in the kingdom we live through the law of love we live through the law of joy we are peaceful people in the kingdom ah my temper will kill somebody oh somebody hold me you are you are acting the moment you are acting like your village the old man is attempting to resurrect you must keep it dead We do these things and usually there are also other carnal people like us who hail us. You know, that hailing thing can be so demonic if we are not careful. <clears throat> Remember they hailed Jesus and they said, hail king of the Jews. A few weeks later on, the same people said, crucify him. Say, you say, yes, you are looking at me, crucify him. Let his blood be on our head. We have to be careful. There is one who deserves to be lifted and held forever. Our job is to confirm into that image. Here we stand, David song, and lift our hands, and we will hail Yahweh. Hail Yahweh. Here we stand and lift our voices. Together we hail Yahweh, hail Yahweh, we will hail Yahweh, hail Yahweh, we will hail Yahweh, hail Yahweh, hail Yahweh, hail Yahweh. Pastor, your first assignment to believers is to make them spiritual. The first assignment of a man of God to believers is to extract carnality. Carnality means a way of living. They must be aware of the divine life, the divine nature, the presence of the Holy Spirit. You turn people to become spiritual. The life of God is in me. I'm not ordinary. I was born by an ordinary man, an ordinary woman from social state. But now, I am a possessor of God's life. Literally, not just some Christian gimmicks. No, I believe it. It's a fact. It's true. How many believers are aware of that divine nature in them? It tells the way we respond. The Bible says, He that cometh from above 
is above all he that cometh from above he that cometh from above is above all he that is of the earth is earthly i come from above born of god whatsoever is born of god overcome it overcome it overcome it challenges are not unusual defeat is what is unusual whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcomes even our faith but as many as believed him even to them that believed upon his name gave them power to become power to become power to become power to become they looked at paul ah, ah. paul who used to kill people saul that would collect a letter and go and slaughter people what happened spirituality listen this is not an issue of being charismatic if you don't train your people to be supernatural to approach life and approach things with the consciousness of the divine life the consciousness of divinity there are great men of god all around the world who have spent their lives and spent the years of their lives bringing the church into a consciousness reprogramming and recalibrating our mind that the believer in partnership with the holy spirit is invincible we must restore these teachings there are many carnal believers on earth in a bit to balance in a bit to teach we have made people carnal helpless no matter what happens they say oh well things just happen like this no you are in every way divine that's why we don't walk in signs and wonders how do you stand and stretch your hands to somebody and expect a transference how do you do that how do you stand and speak there is no wire tied to you to someone outside because carnally speaking i can only see with my optical eyes but when you step back and and walk in the realm of the spirit then you know that the vistas of the spirit are not 2020 infinity infinity left only to your faith so i can stand here and see someone in overflow three and speak and expect the power of god to touch that person why i wasn't born this way it's called spirituality there's too much carnality that's why when you tell people god will bless you they still want you to they want to reduce themselves and many pastors this is the limitation of exaggeration on education when you think that because i'm educated i have a master's in this i have a phd in that now there are very educated people in this place but when people trust their education and then you see them castigate spiritual things anything that does not subscribe to the law of dy dx they fight it are we together mm. you anoint somebody say what is this with this oil they write all kinds of articles titan is a scam by men of god to raise money you see them and then at the end of that ungodly blog they now say my name is pastor so so and so i'm a pastor with living christ parish or whatever it is and that is deceptive because somebody will say ah, this is a pastor and you know carnal people will relate to those things immediately because they are carnally minded are we together anything that massages the flesh they like it once you challenge people why should you come and spend the night praying what is all this blah, 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 thing 10 hours five hours three hours please we are not human beings god gave us a brain and they say that to castigate spirituality the bible says through faith hebrews chapter 10 and verse 3 hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3 through faith we understand please give it to us through faith we understand that the world systems 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 were framed by what please help me they were not framed by cement and water they were framed by an invisible substance called the word of god so that the things which were seen were not made of things which to appear that's why god tells somebody that by this time next year you will be a landlord and spirit wants to receive but the carnality in his mind will fight it how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man and he says have you forgotten the power of the highest this is the mystery that makes things happen i want to show you why we don't get results god has declared that this is a year of triumph but only spiritual people can receive 
a carnal man receives not the things of the spirit neither can he understand them why because they are spiritually discerned let me tell you how to know you are not growing by how much you rely so much on your senses and how embarrassed you are to be spiritual about life because there are people who are embarrassed to be spiritual not just that they don't like it it's a thing of shame it's a thing of shame oh you are playing and just playing a worship song and it's entering your spirit i beg we are human beings a worship song entering my spirit what is there you are listening to all kinds of music you don't know the difference are you seeing now many people in church you have a selection there's gospel music there's another one by a, 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 a secular artist that you want. I don't have a problem with secular artists. I only have this, a problem with the spirits behind them. I love them as people, but there's a spirit behind them. Music is not all about melodies. Music is about sounds and the access that those sounds give spirits into your life. So someone tells you, look, I went to school. This I went to school. He said, much learning make thee mad. I went to school please allow me to play this song so you just play women of faith for a while just to ease the guilt of feeling carnal then somewhere in the selection something just comes babylon babylon then to witchcraft to witchcraft and you are lying down your body is sleeping your spirit does not sleep and something is happening to you how many of you have listened to a message and fell asleep and it continued playing and you followed it how many of you were sleeping and you were acting what that message was saying it now becomes graphic not just that you are hearing suddenly you find yourself in scenarios doing certain things making confessions these are spiritual things the ancient knew this we who are modern people have become so bankrupt of spirituality pastors let your people be spiritual don't pity them because they prayed five minutes and they're feeling tired and you say no you know our church there are balloons everywhere let's not make people feel you are praying and somebody falls down and the way his head hits the the, the chair even you you say Kai. hallelujah amen let's stop why do you stop a baby when he's walking and he tries to fall you allow them hi yes you say sorry but you don't stop the work We must be spiritually minded that's why the gifts of the spirit cannot flow in us we're not spiritual that's why you cannot believe that god can open you up that's why when you hear testimonies the testimonies come to a carnal mind and you start looking at the people scientifically i hope they are lying hepatitis cancer this lady that i know how about allah it's just that koinonia we, we everybody will just keep quiet but me we 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 know at, at that were you blind blind when because of how people are carnally minded there are people who don't believe anything even if they see somebody fall down they will still say somebody pushed him somewhere Hapa. believers you know sometimes when people argue i say ah, ah. prophecy you hear them say they gave somebody the names of people maybe there are people doing it but is it easy to re to to keep names try it is it easy to act like that carnality because we are not spiritually minded if by next week God opens a door for David down we can look and people will now say this guy he touched something we always credit unusual happenings to the realm of the spirit that is a clue that to remain unusual you must remain in the spirit you are like mere men there is nothing worth celebrating the dominion mandate is a restoration into a life of spirituality that the spirit realm governs the physical realm yes it does the spirit realm you must build yourself the divine nature of god the character of god the second dimension let's look at it quickly is the likeness please give it to us again genesis 1 26 likeness talks of the functionality how god functions the image of god talks about who god is his being 
but his likeness talks of how he walks mm. believers there are some of you who god saved many people through your hands but you don't know how to build them because you have not been taught the first thing is to help them become spiritual that's why when we when people get born again here we introduce them to the prayer department not just to be workers in the house why because praying they are filled with the holy ghost they are praying you begin to teach them the value of the word of god you begin to teach them the value of communion you begin to teach them the value of corporate fellowship these are foundations then when they are strong then you begin to teach them how to walk like god you start teaching them speech everybody says speech the first teaching on how to function like god is how to speak like him hmm. you reign you reign you reign you reign kadosh you are mighty on your throne you reign you reign you reign you reign kadosh you are mighty on your Then you begin to learn that he has made us unto our God. Listen, kings and priests. Your priesthood talks of your ministry to God. Your ministry spiritually. That kingly dimension talks of governance and legislature. As a priest, the jurisdiction is the secret place. The place of incense. The place of ministry where you send that incense, it will rise to heaven. The prayers of the saints, the intercession, fellowship, communion, koinonia, that's priesthood. Then you take away that priestly regalia and you put on your crown and your signet ring and you hold your scepter and step out. That is legislature, that is governance. Everyone must manifest this king priest dimension. You are a priest. When you come to the house of God, you are ministering to God. You are offering up worship and intercession for the saints. You are advocating for the destinies of men. You are communing with God Almighty. That's priesthood. Then, you take on that regalia of kingship. And then you legislate. And the Bible says, where the word of a king is, there is, please help me, where the word of a common man is there is sound but where the word of a king is so i have been made a king and a priest not unto my village unto god and so i can legislate listen the first thing that must begin to change in your life to prove that you are functioning like god is your speech your speech ah we are the weak ones we are the ones who are this and that uh -uh. You know, the Bible says, do not say before an angel I made a mistake. Your speech, it matters. Are we together? Your, your words begin to be cultured by the word of God. You don't speak all kinds of things and invoke woes upon yourself. Your communications become spiritual. Bless you. Good morning, sir. Oh, Aluta Continua, Victoria Escarta, you are prophesying. Others are speaking, they are not kings. But you, you have become a believer, you have been redeemed, yet you are still speaking. You have come out of Egypt, Egypt is still in you. And now, when you speak, you are sending sounds to the realm of the spirit. And you are programming things. They speak and it doesn't happen. You speak and it happens. The suffering continues. You massage hardship pressure puts you and pushes you and everything that comes out is your hey why you why you and, and you all this kind of very very unbelieving talk hallelujah you hear a bad report in the name of jesus christ a thousand may fall by my right that's a king speaking ten thousand by my by my right side none shall harm me only with my eyes will i see and behold and, uh, the reward of the wicked ah i will make sure you don't marry and she tells you to your face 
and you smile a cause causeless shall not stand there is a mystery that no you see all this threat the woman said this ah uh -uh, a cause causeless shall not stand are we together yes will you ever finish this house the hand of zerubbabel that started this work it's not something you just reminisce in your mind it must be focalized it must be focalized i am the head and not the tail i am above and not beneath the gentiles come to my light lord favor surrounds me like a shield this is a believer talking let me tell you what ordinary people would do the people in our villages know this you see what they do during festivals the major activity in festival is talking and dancing then death follows later on in the evening people start dying because people are talking talking chanting things you are moving around you just sense a presence that is not of god uh, don't sit and say Kai, i'm not sure be sure by praying in tongues start tongues first let let praying in tongues precede you while you are verifying so that should in case you can be praying and hear a shout from another room and say oh i see There are human beings that carry spirits they are innocent they are on the way they are on their way coming to your house to introduce spirits not unwillingly but all of a sudden you sense an urge and you begin to pray and they call you and say sorry i just feel like not coming and you know that not only have they revealed something to you they themselves need to be helped you can easily know the spirits that control men by their reaction when you pray because the spirit influenced them to act in certain ways that's why many of you when you finish praying in your house that's the day everybody quarrels you i teach you the mystery now the moment you pray agitations from everyone you go you enter your room and the kindest person in your room is attacking you the devil is sending a response if you know you attack him back with joy 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 when you turn to Cana, don't shout at me yes i'm coming back from koinonia say you claim you're coming back from the church and look at how you match this i'm sorry it's okay you reign you ancient zion king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne break forth thou fountains of the deep and weep kadosh so you learn how to speak by faith mark 11 22 23 if thou shalt say give it to us jesus is teaching the disciples how kings speak he's teaching them the language of royalty listen this thing is not just some some you know many believers after working for a while we claim that those who do these things are baby christians it's a joke a principle that jesus himself introduced nothing in your life will ever change until you sustain capacity to command it to he told job has thou commanded thy morning if you don't command it something else will impregnate your morning and jesus answering said unto them have faith in god the correct rendition there is have the faith of god operate like him for verily i say unto you now whoever shall say to what say to what so it is okay to speak to things not just to human beings jesus our high priest spoke to a mountain spoke to a tree who told you they don't hear biology did not teach you that they hear but jesus the spiritual teaches you that they can hear who told you the earth does not hear who told you that when you stand and speak over your family miles and kilometers apart they don't hear so you can stand and begin to legislate they call you at home and they say in the last three days everybody has been sick you say okay i know what to do and sometimes it's not just becoming a priest you jam the door put your crown carry your regalia i send the wind on errand carry the anointing from here to that location 
you must believe this thing i'm teaching you i'm programming you to be spiritual and how to function like god if thou shalt say unto this mountain be thou removed that means when you speak to things you must be specific specific give us this day what do you want ah i want i want to do well that's a vague and careless prayer you must call it by name whatsoever adam called that was the name thereof so you name your destiny peace you name your marriage joy are we together you don't turn and say this stupid husband no way my marriage is heaven on earth i call it what it is I refuse to be poor i reject it it doesn't glorify god it doesn't help me fulfill my assignment i decree and declare favor surrounds me if there is a garrison of favor men are coming to bless me today this is a king speaking you are impregnating your morning while others are sleeping you are speaking favor comes in the name of jesus no accidents no nothing I am immune to activities of witches. I am above. I come from above. While you are speaking, somebody is sleeping and laughing at you. By evening, they tell you the person is in the hospital. When he comes back home, he will never laugh at you again when you are speaking. That laughter is, a, is mockery. Mockery is initiated by a spirit. When Jesus wanted to raise the dead and he said the dead was sleeping, People who were crying turned and started laughing. They mocked him and said, get out of the house. Go out. Get out of the house. I want to raise the dead. And when he was alone, he said, little girl, Talita Kumi, I say unto you, arise. Are we together? Yeah. When Abraham had a conversation and he heard that God was speaking about a child, Sarah had it and laughed. That laugh was sarcasm one of the proofs that somebody has a wicked spirit living in him is how sarcastic he is when believers make faith proclamations over their destiny you see someone while he's jumping his shoe has already caught and you laugh you see that kind of laughter is a spirit it's not just an act it's not just a negative disposition that's why when we say pray and speak and other people stand and they're wondering ah, ah, you mean this is how these people speak that's what that's what brought us here we acted like him in the name of jesus people are blessed tonight the miracle service is a blessing koinonia is a blessing everything flourishes in this ministry because a word waters it words are powerful god rules the earth by the word of his power so you learn the speech of the kingdom you learn how to manifest faith but one of the things that you also learn are the systems of the kingdom. I'm teaching you how to be like God. Let me teach you a deep mystery. Our time is gone. I'll teach you this and then we'll just pray. We'll continue next week. Have you been blessed? God never does anything in the Bible as a process twice. Read your Bible. God's system is to initiate things once and build a system around them for continuity believers hear me i want to teach you how to function like god that's why many businesses fail that's why many people cannot carry out the dominion mandate we'll discuss it next week when we talk of governance he says be fruitful then he says what multiply replenish subdue you can't do those things if you do not understand god's system so god initiates a process as a template then designs a system around it watch this god created man as her dispensation knows once and never had to create man again are we together he created man with the woman in him and then he brought the woman out and designed a system in them and says continue the result of that reproduction 7.2 billion people on the earth in spite of an average of eight people that die per second the earth is still growing because a man built a system systems are powerful are you hearing what i'm saying systems are what powerful when you do business by repeating the same thing you are not acting like god you create a product this is what many people have done google and all of that they don't know about you yet you carry their laptop because there is a system they made it once that's why coca-cola and the rest they have different branches around the world what did they program in those branches 
systems everybody says systems the greatest conglomerates in the world today operate through systems the same thing happening everywhere the catholics roman catholics i love them among other reasons because of the power and the dexterity of their systems systems maintain consistency it is how god functions god has not needed even when man fell when he was about to wipe the people in noah's days he still preserved the seed and out of those eight families new beginning he started another race systems jesus came as the firstborn of the begotten he died and nobody has had to die for his sins again a system of salvation whoever believes in him shall not perish are we blessed yes africans do not understand the systems of the kingdom so we do the same thing again and again do you know why god created things like videos systems so i don't have to preach the same message twice i preach it once and it is captured in a system and while i'm sleeping i am multiplying the influence to millions of people it's called systems don muen has never met with you yet you have been blessed by his ministry the anointing also obeys systems that's why everybody in every corner listening to don muen's songs will feel the anointing think about it you are not a leader if you do not master building systems when i learned this principle it made my life easy look at how god built a system god himself transferred governance to man and programmed that man and handed the earth to him systems now man is mishandling the earth largely but it's a system the first crops that came out of the earth the bible says god himself planted i hope you know read your bible god planted trees systems and then in the tree he built systems what is another name for that system a seed this is how god operates a seed is not money a seed is a mystery that represents the system of continuity continuity in every man born of a woman there is a seed that represents potentials for continuity in every woman there is a womb that receives a seed as potentials for continuity so once there is a seed and there is a womb there is reproduction hear me once there is a seed and there is a womb there is what reproduction a seed without a womb cannot bring reproduction a womb without a seed cannot bring reproduction you need to find the wombs of there are many wombs on earth a woman's womb is only an adumbration of many other wombs the morning has a womb every day has a womb you can impregnate it with words and it will give birth in the daytime the pregnancy that happened in the night can be delivered for you in the daytime your mind is a womb information are the seeds when you plant informations in your mind like a woman gets pregnant over time it will deliver to you and change your life are we blessed god never does the same thing twice when you find out that you are trying to do the same thing as a leader the dominion mandate is not working in your life there must be a system of continuity let me tell you is one of the reasons why we never grow and never flourish how you know there is no system in your life is that your absence stops continuity when your absence stops continuity then there is no system so you are the ceo of the company you travel for two weeks you come back and meet hellfire there's no system nobody knows what to do no system if i'm not around for one year in koinonia it will still continue running the only thing that will be missed is my unique grace and anointing why systems hmm. that's how pastors should train pastors you should be if 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 pastor alpha pastor femi and promise are all my pastors for instance if you hear pastor alpha you should not feel bad that i was not there that's systems 
I have reproduced myself in him when you hear him you will miss me I love it every time I'm not around and people send me a text they say apostle we miss you but God koinonia was fire I said that's right systems but because of our inferiority and this village mindset that we have grown with every time you are not around and things don't work you are happy do you know why that's why many leaders do not mentor and train others because they think it is their way by exclusively capturing knowledge and keeping it how many people have died with secrets that can turn the lives of people how about anointings no if he carries the same anointing as i'm carrying will he ever respect me again look at god he didn't wait for you to be renewed he gave you the holy spirit straight up immediately after confession he granted you the holy spirit he didn't say change no he granted you the holy spirit to help you part of the ways that we rule and dominate is by building systems around things your prosperity is not something that is in the hands of god today your prosperity has been programmed in a system are you hearing what i'm saying god can in the systems are supervised so it's not like they are random there is still an individual supervising them the same way you put systems you can come and look at it and you can decide to influence it that's a sign that you are the owner of the system somebody can slaughter someone as a thief and go back home and get his wife pregnant that system will not stop because he's a wicked man. Now, you'll go to hell if he doesn't repent. But as far as that pregnancy is concerned, an unbeliever who does not know God taps into God's system of wealth and abundance. Hallelujah. I was telling the school of ministry students that there's something I'm going to teach them about finances that I've not touched any, I've not taught any of the sets. Ah, it's a revelation that God gave me that, I mean, if I teach you that and you don't prosper, I don't know how to help you again. I, I don't know how to help you. Systems. Let me give you a little tip of the iceberg. That being employed forever till retirement is a cause. Because in God's system, you start under people. But eventually, the goal is for you to be established yourself. So the spirit of servitude is such that you continue to serve a man. If you, not everybody will have platforms like churches, businesses. But even under those platforms, there must allocate a place that allows your grace to function. That is the spirit of God and is the program of God. That's why he carved out earth and gave man. But he gave man delegated authority. That means it is exousia. But it is still supervised. So he can call man to order. Like Pharaoh could still call Joseph to order. But Pharaoh did not interrupt. It is the system we run koinonia with. That's why sometimes you never come and see me check. Ah, have the leaders fixed this flower well? Systems. There are men of God. You are preaching. You are preparing sermon. They just call you and say one wire has caught. You bike by yourself to Sabo. And buy the wrong wire. And bring it back. Before you finish you, you forgot everything. And then you are stressing yourself when you are doing everything by yourself is a sign that you are not functioning like God let me show you why many of our parents are under stress they did not mentor the young people so they kept doing everything now the youngest person in the family is 31 yet is still father and mother that is providing food because they did not teach them how education does not teach you how it just enlightens your mind it is mentorship it is discipleship that teaches you how so a man of god starts a ministry and there are ordinary people and then you start teaching them how to prosper you show them the pathways to the anointing are we together you don't hide it there's nothing to hide these are the secrets you guide them you mentor them they receive measures of that anointing that is upon you you have built a system and then they begin to function the key to hardship is to not be able to reproduce yourself through systems you will pay the price and you will never last everything that has lasted and outlived the founders subscribe to function like god we're going to pray 
dominion the chaos in our society today is because we have not conformed to his image and his likeness his divine nature and his functionality you see why it's important to get people saved because that is the condition that can guarantee the potentials for dominion ye must be born again that's why we make altar calls that's why we're still going to make altar call tonight because there are people scattered inside outside who need Jesus now most preachers don't tell you why they just say come to Jesus there is a hellfire somewhere to burn the living daylight out of you and you run out of fear you are born again and you don't know what you ran from and to what dominion this is not just the issue of heaven it does not take so much to be assured of heaven because it's not something you do by yourself but when it has to do with your reigning listen the degree to which you have become like God in his image and his likeness is the degree to which you measure your success and your prosperity are you seeing why life cooperates with others life cooperates with God and everybody who functions like him life was designed to cooperate with God alone if you are not God life will not cooperate with you so our needless sufferings and pains is because we have fabricated methodologies by ourselves attempting to get God's result our way let hope let it rise darkness trembles in your own someone is rising beyond every shadow every shackle please rise up on your feet let go rise darkness trembles in your holy let go let it rise tonight darkness trembles in Listen, I want you to look at your life carefully. We're going to pray now. You can trace every negative thing to your life, to your inability to have conformed to the image or the likeness. There are troubles and sicknesses that have come to us today. High blood pressure because of worry. When the peace and the joy of God is in you. Listen, there is no drug that can give you peace. There is no drug that can give you joy. When you smoke cocaine and snuff all kinds of things, they don't give you peace. They attempt it. You know why people try getting high and they take substance? They are looking for peace. They are looking for joy. They are attempting to use things. Life was designed to respond to you once you are a possessor of the gift of righteousness and then abundance of grace that comes through knowledge through knowledge the bible says good understanding giveth favor but the way of the transgressor is hard could it be hear me that this is the missing link in your ministry could it be that this is the missing link in your business could it be that this is the missing link in your family why are things not working i'm always fighting with my wife i think i made a mistake i married a wrong woman it's a lie i think i and my children are stubborn there may be something you are fighting your children because you are trying to force them you are violating something about the dominion mandate you don't force people you give them a revelation you force your children to wear your, the cloth you want you force them to read the course you want every time you force men rebellion is inevitable that's why the children revolt but when you give them a revelation you see that God never forces us I set before you life and death I set before you blessing and cursing but here's my advice choose life why so that you can live in other words I want you to live and if you must live the key is choosing life not I force you to live that's what parents are doing and that's why children revolt when you resort back 
to giving them revelations look it looks like i'm hard on you but it's because i love you i've made mistakes in my own life and i want you to be a great gentleman i'm proud of you and i see potentials that gentleman by himself will start talking in well by himself will stop dressing like rags and remove all those things and start babbing well and not looking like a thief the gentleman will subscribe immediately because you gave them revelation but when you use force on people you are acting as the antichrist man was not mentioned in every element that was given that man should dominate man was not given there are pastors that dominate members and they never see they are anointed but people never like them they can walk into your house any day anytime cook for me fry chips for me i'm a man of god add this and that for me after all elijah told the shunammite elijah did not force her home. the woman had a right to refuse the trouble in the world is a negligence of the dominion mandate nobody was born rich nobody was born poor are we together people program themselves something in my life my life is hard creation is hostile to me in the garden of eden nothing fought adam nothing satan was still alive but adam was immune he only gave access lift your voice and pray and say lord what key do i need to apply to my life please pray pray why are things not working in my life he spoke and said let them have dominion why is my marriage not working why is my job not working why are doors closed over my life why do people hate me i'm anointed why is my church not growing why can't i experience the anointing of the holy spirit why am i poor and broke and begging at all times let hope rise darkness trembles in your own sing it one more time yeah. let hope rise tonight darkness trembles in your own hallelujah hold on genesis please give us something just came into my heart and i want to share it because genesis chapter 4 we are going to read verse 8 let me show why you why our world is a wicked world because you see every time people fail instead of taking responsibility that i am violating the principles and the laws of dominion usually we look for people to fight the bible says and cain this was after the sacrifice are we together now the sacrifice of abel was taken and the sacrifice of cain was rejected what was wrong violation of patterns violations of systems are we together now cain got angry cain can be your uncle cain can be your senior brother you see where enmity came from i am the senior brother in this family how can this younger one be successful that's what was happening there are men who fight their wives there are others who fight their younger ones there are people who hate themselves and the bible says it came to pass that when they were in the field that cain rose up against abel his brother and slew him what fruit of the spirit was missing no love no love no love are we seeing there now next verse and the lord said unto cain listen where is abel thy brother and he said i know not that's the liar there at work in him the manifestation of satan at work am i my brother's keeper no kindness no he had become hardened and wicked verse 10 
listen it says and he said what hast thou done the voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground verse 11 it says and now thou art caused from the earth which had opened her mouth to receive thy blood oh dear i think i've lost myself the verse i'm looking for i think is the verse before verse 8 that says um cain was angry and god told him if you have done well will it not be accepted maybe it's, i'm sure it's the verses other verses in front we'll leave it because of time that's the scripture i was trying to look for that after cain met with god and was angry god told him come oh, that why are you angry that i accepted your brother's sacrifice and rejected yours if you did it well will it not be accepted but if you do not do it well sin lie it at your door i think it's before yes it says give us verse six verse six we'll read six and seven and the lord said unto cain thank you this is the verse thank you media why art thou what angry god is speaking to you now emoji why are you angry at another man's church that the church is increasing and you are not increasing businessman why are you angry at another man's business why are you angry that uh, your sister is having her children well cultured he says and why is thy countenance falling that's frustration verse 7 if thou doest well according to patterns shall not thy shall thou not be accepted then he says and if thou doest not well sin lieth at thy door see let me tell you every time you don't do well you will not get results and when you don't get the results anger frustration will come in that's why you hate successful people there are times that you see somebody with a nice car and just say thieves all these young pastors they are the ones who know how they are manipulating you see someone anointed and you begin to speak cynicism is a product of not obeying the dominion mandate was given to all men everybody say all men the ministry god called specific people into ministry but capacity to execute the dominion mandate legislature and governance reproduction fruitfulness the capacity to subdue was given to all men there's no need for jealousy lift your voice and insist and say lord from tonight you are giving me enlightenment i have the gift of righteousness knowledge is causing grace to be abundant for me i insist that i begin to reign i insist that i begin to reign i insist that i begin to reign I insist that I begin to reign. Pray, we're rounding up. I insist that I begin to reign. Pray. No one may have achieved certain things from where you come from, but you are the game changer. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light my life. Light me, Lord. 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 Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Pray it. Light my life. Light my life. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm rounding up. Listen, there are many of us seated here. If I ask the number one need of people here right now is finances because of recession. Do you know why? 
there are people sitting and waiting for God to change their financial situation I guarantee you in the name of the Lord it will never change if you are waiting for it to change one day the kingdom has a system built in the price you have to pay is Lord light me open my eyes where am I missing it is it that I'm not tithing is it that I don't have relationships I'm not building value where am I missing it because there are people nigeria is suffering today because we are missing something in the dominion mandate we don't produce we are not fruitful we are not reproducing so the earth is fighting us hallelujah let me give you the prayer point you are going to say lord show me the key some of you already have some keys but there is a key you need you can look at it and never see it until it is shown to you a man can receive nothing except it is given that you are opening the bible does not mean illumination is entering you lift your voice and cry concerning that issue that attempts to dominate you open my eyes i can continue to be sick forever pray Lord, I'm tired of financial struggles. I'm tired of hardship. I'm tired of being carnal. I'm tired of being weak. It is in my destiny to be spiritual, supernatural, anointed, divine, full of knowledge, full of grace. Pray, pray. Shagada bakata praska da balia kata prosese de bash. Embra kato kusoto praka toje kata balakata. Rakata kata kata barato. Brande ke te ke roto soto pre ke te li adabas. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. I want us to pick. I tell you, don't miss next week's meeting. I will piece some things. I will show you God's system of governance and legislature. And why certain things don't obey you when you speak we are taking it gradually there are some of us nothing works for you you pray no answer you prophesy no answer nothing divine I will show you why next week hallelujah one last prayer let's take the first command that was given to man be fruitful I like you to cry and prophesy I told you that the first way to function like God is your speech command everything that has refused to to blossom in your life your spiritual life your finances your relationships your career your academics those who are students your exams are, is coming pray it won't be like before again no it won't be like before again i program my reality I determine my reality. I program my reality. I'm a speaking spirit. A speaking spirit. A creative spirit. Joshua Selman, be fruitful. Koinonia, be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. In business, be fruitful. In ministry, be fruitful. In your body, be fruitful. No barrenness, no barrenness, no barrenness. Everything works together for my good. I prophesy fruitfulness. Hallelujah. Everyone say after me in the name of Jesus. Say tonight marks a turnaround in my life. I create my realities. 
I stop letting things just happen. I make them happen. I speak like God. I make decrees like God. I speak to both animate and inanimate things. And I declare they must respond to me. Say in the name of Jesus. I speak to my health. I speak to my finances. I speak to my academics. I speak to my job. I speak to ministry. I speak to business. I speak to my body. Hear the word of the Lord. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a shout of praise. You walk with this and see the way things will begin to be altered in your life. Walk with this and see the way you will begin to create realities. Walk with this and you will see yourself exercising dominion. And then you will see triumph. Now thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph. Always, not sometimes. Hallelujah. Keep standing everyone inside and outside. Give me a few minutes and we're done. We spoke about the first condition for to subscribe back to the life of authority and dominion. I said the first thing is your natural birth. Everyone hearing me is hearing me because you were born. But the second and more important than the first is your rebirth. There are people here who whilst hearing me preach the Holy Spirit began to speak to you and said you need to make your ways right don't play games you can deceive men but it will affect your capacity for dominion you know the things happening around your life and family and there are others you handed your life to jesus christ but at a point in your life things went you know just haywire and you left the things of god you are not serious and you are saying man of god if you will make a call and include me i will come here those two categories of people those surrendering their lives truly and sincerely you are not playing games overflow one two three online connect with us but you are in here i believe there are people in here there are people outside please you have one minute wherever you are i want you to make a bold step and come out here i want to pray with you we want to initiate you into that family of dominion don't wait for someone to come make your way make your way quickly appreciate them i believe someone is coming somewhere i believe someone is coming somewhere if there are people coming from outside clear the way for them god bless you my dear god bless you people are coming encourage them koinonia you're saying man of god i'm tired of watching the way my life is i'm tired of watching the way my family is going i trust you and i know that if you pray for me that will be the beginning god bless you god bless you don't be afraid don't be ashamed don't let anyone stop you you're saying man of god i gave my life to christ one time but i think i need to start afresh i can't lie to myself i need a fresh encounter join them quickly join them quickly god bless you join them quickly i'm tired of watching the devil prevail over my life koinonia appreciate them those coming from outside any of the overflows make your way to the front it's a new beginning for you it's a new beginning for you in the name of jesus no power will stop you hallelujah thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for making this bold decision you see gone are the days when when people come out for altar calls they come out as if they are they are responding they are going for a burial a, an altar call is like a speech and price giving ceremony you are being handed over something that no currency no amount can buy i want you to be very bold about it are we together lift your right hand and i want you to say this after me say it with faith jesus is in this place say lord jesus i believe in you I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for me I receive your life into my spirit and I declare that from today I am born of God I am a child of God the life of God is at work in my spirit I declare that from today I live a life of dominion I live a life of victory the power of the flesh the power of sin the power of satan is broken over my life forever 
in Jesus name keep your hands lifted I declare your sins forgiven in the name of Jesus I declare that the Spirit of God finds expression in your life from today everything that has dominated you I decree and declare that you rise above it I speak to you that this is the beginning of a new season in your life let the grace the glory the power the wisdom of God begin to find expression in your life in the name of Jesus Christ you will move forever upwards and you will never go down again in Jesus name I pray amen and amen thank you for making this bold decision now please all of you this way I just want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands they would require a few details from you and communicate a few informations please cooperate with them God bless you let's honor them quickly let's honor them quickly hallelujah praise the Lord dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline 